In this video, we'll be talking more about some vocabulary and things you need to know for proofs and doing a little bit more in-depth proofs. And of course, we'll do a lot more practice in class. So first, let's make sure we understand what a theorem is. We'll be using lots of theorems, but a theorem is a true statement that follows as a result of other true statements. So these are things that mathematicians have proven to be true. They are not definitions or anything like that, something that we just say is true. People have proved these theorems to be true. All right, two column proofs, that's just one style of proof. And that's the one we used in the algebra proofs in the last video. And we write those as numbered statements with their reasons that show the logical order of an argument. And then there's also another type that is called a paragraph proof. And that's just writing it as you think of it in, in complete sentences. So that's another way to do a proof as well. And um, mathematicians in college and, and research and things like that, they use more of a paragraph proof style, more so than two column proof. However, I will probably be doing two column proofs more often because it helps to organize our thoughts. So it, it makes things flow a lot, a lot better and easier for you to see my thought and easier for me to see your thoughts. Okay, so these are properties that we need to add to our proof cards. So we already talked about reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties of equality, but this also works for congruence. So it can work for congruent segments, congruent angles, and so forth. So I want to make sure that we add these. So if I have any segment AB, then I know that AB is congruent to itself, AB. And then symmetric, if I have AB is congruent to CD, then that's the same thing as saying CD is congruent to AB. So it doesn't matter which side of the congruence symbol it is on. And then again, the transitive, remember that's when we repeat something. So two things are congruent to the same thing. Here, that same thing is the segment CD. So that would mean that AB and EF are also congruent to each other. All right, so those um, are properties that should look familiar, but now we're applying them to congruence. So when you abbreviate, if you want property of equality, then you do POE. If you wanted property of congruence, or you, you're using it for congruence, you do POC. That's the only difference. All right, so let's do a problem like this. We're going to do a proof. Let's do a two-column proof. So. We have statements and we have reasons. And before we even start listing them, let's look at the diagram and see what's going on. So we have DE is congruent to EF. So I'm going to mark those congruence. And then it says EF is congruent to GF. So we can see then that this DE is also beginning congruent to FG. And if they're congruent, then that means that their measures are the same, and I'd be able to set those expressions equal to each other. And that's how we'll be able to solve for the variable. And then the rest will look like an algebraic proof. So let's do that. Our first statement should be our given information. DE is congruent to EF. And EF is congruent to GF, and my reason is given. And we said we knew in the diagram then that DE and FG would be congruent, and that's because EF is, is in both of those congruent statements. So we can say DE is congruent to GF, and the new property that we just learned, that's the transitive property Of congruence. So I'm going to write POC this time, not POE, because notice I'm not, I don't have equal sign, I have congruence sign. Now, in order to be able to write an equation, I need to change from congruence to equals. So I would like to write DE equals GF. How do I know that? That's the definition of congruence, right? Of congruent segments, but we can write of congruence that would apply for angles, the measures of angles and things like that as well. So that's a previous proof card that we did. 
So that's the definition of congruence. And now I can write my equation that I wrote over there, 3x minus 5 equals 7x minus 21. And how do I know that's the equal? Well, I just replaced. And the diagram, DE, is the same value as 3x minus 5. So that's just substitution. And again, this is a property of equality. Right? I can only substitute in an equation. I can't do that with congruence. All right, and then now we're just going to solve. So if I solve this, I would probably subtract the 3x. So my next statement would look like negative 5 equals 4x minus 21. And that was the subtraction property. And that's of equality. Make this go down further. Then I would add 21. So if I do that, that would give me positive 16. <clears throat> so that's the addition property of equality. And then I would divide by the 4. So I would get 4 equals x. And that's the division property. And then we did what the directions asked us to do, which was solve for the variable. All right, so then our proof is completed. All right, so try to do this one on your own. Set it up and then write your equation. So again, you're solving for the variable. So this one requires a little bit more work in order to get to the equation part. I think we naturally, when we look at this diagram, we see that these two things should be the same all right but getting there in a proof we have to really explain all of that thing all of those things that are going on in our head our our brain will go to that conclusion very quickly but we have to lay out the steps of why we know things so we need to start with our given and then from our given we should immediately go to equa an equation that way we can start working with equations and substitutions and all that stuff so that's why we do step two now the thing that might have been hard for you to realize is what we are really doing in our head is segment addition. I'm saying that these two pieces, EF and FG, make up that EG. Same thing with FG and this one. Okay, and those overlap, right? So we see that FG is in both of those. Okay, so we need to first say that those two smaller segments equal those bigger segments. That's with segment addition postulate. Okay, now that we have that, then we can go back and look at this second step and say, oh, I'm going to substitute in. So this came from here. All right, I replaced EG with EF plus FG. I replaced HF with HG plus FG. That's where I got that red equation. Okay, that's just using the substitution property. All right, then, then we can take care of this FG that's on both sides. Okay, so you see how I subtracted the FG, and that left me with just EF and HG. So step five is really exactly where our brain went to immediately. All right, so all of that is what our brain was doing. And I know it's hard to slow your brain down and think about why do I know all of those things. Okay, I get that. Well, that's why we'll practice this a lot. So we did subtraction property. And now I can replace EF and HG with those expressions. And here's where the algebra comes in. So hopefully you got x equals 3. And we'll do one more. Okay, this one is more geometric, so let's look at this one. This one's a fill-in-the-blank kind of proof. All right, so notice that we are given that AD equals 8, and that BC equals 8, and we know that BC is congruent to CD. Okay, and we're trying to prove that AD 
is congruent to CD. Okay, so basically we're trying to show, I'm going to put in red, we're trying to show that AD is congruent to CD. So we don't know that, the stuff in red we don't know, that was not given, that's what we're trying to prove. Okay, and logically that makes sense because if these are both 8 and then these tick marks mean they're the same, then this would also have to be 8, right? And so if those are both 8, then, then those would both be congruent. That's what congruent means. Okay, so that's what we're going to do in our proof. So the first thing is it's, we need to write our given. So they broke theirs up into two different statements. So we're given that AD equals 8 and that BC equals 8. All right, then the next thing they have is the transitive property of equality. Since these are equations and they're both equal to 8, then we can say that these two are equal to each other. So AD equals BC. And then it says the definition of congruent statements. So now I'm, tra I'm transitioning from equals to congruence. So that would look like this. It would look like the same exact thing, except we have congruence instead of equals. All right, then it has BC is congruent to CD. Um, that was in our given. And I don't particularly like splitting up the givens. I like to put it all at the beginning, but that's just my personal preference. But they, I wouldn't have used it until now. So some people like to put it when they use it. Other people like to just put it in the beginning. It doesn't matter. As long as you include it, it, it it's, it's all good. <laughs> so you can see that when they're right next to each other, you can see very clearly that BC is in both of them. So we can use transitive property again to show that AD and CD are congruent. Now we're going to show that they're congruent, right? Not equals because this is congruent. So we want to make sure that when we say transitive, we say transitive property of congruence this time, not of equality. Okay, so the reasons for three and six are very similar, but one's of equality and one's of congruence. Okay, so last one. We have in the diagram, here let's move this over, that AC this whole segment is equal to CE, okay, and AB is equal to DE, and we want to show that C is the midpoint of BD, okay, so it does look like it, and in order to know that it's the midpoint, so I'm thinking this out, I would have to show that this length is the same as this length, right? I need those to be congruent to each other. If those are congruent to each other, then I can use, by definition, that is what we mean by a midpoint. So that's our thought process. That's what we're going to use. And so if I want to show those green segments are congruent to each other, then I have to somehow connect them to the segments that they did give me. So they told us that these bigger ones are congruent, so we'll definitely have some segment addition in there to show how those big segments are broken down, and then we'll show that those smaller pieces are congruent to each other. All right, so that's the plan. All right, I need to move this out of the way. All righty. So first, AC equals CE. That would be given, right? That's just given. All right, next. AB plus BC equals AC. So if I'm showing that I'm adding two segments together, that's just the segment addition postulate, right? Alrighty. And we knew that we were going to do that. Then it says transitive property of equality. All right, so what are they looking for here? Since they, they kind of dictated the order that we go and we have to follow their logic. So look at the two equations. Is there anything that's repeated? Yeah, AC is repeated, so they must be looking for AB plus BC is going to be equal to CE. Alrighty, so we know that's true. Then they said CD plus DE equals CE, so they're, break, they're doing the segment addition again for the other big one. Segment addition postulate. Okay. 
and then what do you think they're going to do? Another transitive property of equality. So now our transitive, what are they both equal to? They're both equal to CE. So I could say AB plus BC should be equal to CD plus DE. Alrighty, now we're going to say that AB equals DE. Well, how do we know that? AB equals DE. Oh, that's right. They told us that in the beginning. So that's another given. And so if those are the same, then I can replace those, can't I? So look at what happened here. This side looks exactly the same, but this side, those were, those were what's different because they use substitution. They replace that. So anytime it's a replacement, that's substitution property of equality. All right. And then they said they're going to use subtraction property. Well, the only way you can use subtraction is if you're subtracting the same thing on both sides. So I would have to see, oh, I have AB on both sides, so I'll be subtracting AB. So that would mean I'm left with BC equals CD. Let's go back to the diagram, make sure that we see what, what did we just say. So BC equals CD. Those are those green segments, right? We just said that BC equals CD. So that's what we were aiming for, right? Alrighty then. So now we can say, they say definition of congruent segments. So now we can say that BC is congruent to CD. We change from equation to congruent. And then finally, we can say that C is the midpoint. And again, that's just by definition. So we would say definition of midpoint. Anytime you're thinking of in your head, well, that's, that's because that's what that word means. Anytime you're saying that, then you're going to use the definition as your reason. So again, like I said, we will do tons more in class.